Well, hello, hello, everyone. It's Ashley here from Lovely Commotion. Thank you for joining me today. Spring has sprung in the Midwest. I'm not sure where you live. You can drop me a comment. Let me know. Has spring sprung where you live? It definitely has here. And I love and loathe spring because I love being able to get outside with my kiddos. And I love, love, love the themes and the activities we get to do in preschool. I hate, 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 hate my allergies. Like, Oh my goodness, they just get so incredibly bad. But if you're here, thank you so much. I'm excited and whispering out comes bugs. And so I have today for you a free resource and I am super excited to share it with you. I took some of my favorite bug activities for um, doing in my thematic units and I put them into a set for you for free. So each one has come out of a resource that I already have, but I wanted to share um, what I thought would be helpful for you. So some of these are whole group activities, some of them are small group activities, but I'm hoping that they can be helpful to you. So let's jump in and I wanna show you what's in this set and then I'll let you know how you can grab them. So the very first one is from my pre-K insect um, resource. And it is, what is an insect? And I love to start with these type of questions. I love to pull that schema that they already have and learn what they know already. What do you know about an insect? What is a bug? How is a bug different than an insect? How do we know it's an insect? And so this poster helps with that. Um, I like to use real photographs when possible, just like with this ant. And we talk about, look, he has two antenna. Those are going to come off his head. He has three body parts and we can point to the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. He has six, he or she has six legs and some insects have wings. So we need to understand that they don't just all look like ants. Some of them do have wings, but we're looking for those body parts when we're trying to decide whether they're an insect. And so I usually keep this up um, in our circle time area, because sometimes they'll ask themselves, like if they're finding um, an insect toy in the sensory tub, like, is this an insect? Does it have all these pieces? And so it's a great visual for you to share with your preschoolers, not too cluttered, not too busy, not too much information, but enough for them to understand. Does it have it? Two antennas, three body parts, six legs, maybe wings. And then we can call it an insect, right? We can know what we're talking about. Another activity that is great for whole group comes out of the two and three year old bugs lesson plan. And it is a song, the five little ladybugs. And with the five little ladybugs, we have five little ladybugs. And I just put them on six sticks, super simple, right? Oh, I don't know why four is not in the right place here. And I can have little bugs come and help me hold them if I would like, or I can hold them up and we can do our song. And so we count them to start with. How many ladybugs are there? This song is about five. We better make sure we have all five ladybugs, right? And so we can count them. And then as the song goes on, each ladybug flies away. And so we're working on number sense, some early subtraction. And I like to take away, um, from the five so that we can still count one, two, three, four. And so five little ladybugs climbed up the, climbing up a door, one flew away, then there were four. Look, this is the number four, that's how many ladybugs are left. Four little ladybugs sitting on a tree, one flew away, now there are three. Yeah, look, three happy little ladybugs. Three little ladybugs lean, landed on a shoe, one flew away, and then there were, and you can stop see if they can finish that rhyme. So not only are we working on number sense, not only are we seeing some numerals, we are also working on rhyming and rhythm in reading. So super fun one. They love it. You could definitely do it multiple times. Um, they may even ask for it, but it's a fun one. Um, if you feel comfortable, you could also put this in your literacy center for them to act out as well. Kind of see what kind of language they can come up with to recreate that rhyme or that song. A small group activity that is super well loved and you could you could use it just about I mean the math center obviously is pattern block mats. Put these in your math centers, use them as a small group, use them as a table activity when they come in the door. Use them as a light table activity if you have the light table um, pattern blocks like I recently got. I, I really like them. They work really well and they can work 
on some geometry skills here. They're having to turn, flip, do the rotation of all these different, they're having to figure out these spatial locations of all of these different shapes. And if you are working on some of the shapes, you could sit down as a small group and you could go over, oh my goodness, how many triangles did you use on that B? Let's see, can you find the triangle? So you can extend it for sure, but pattern mats, if you've ever, uh, pattern block mats, if you've ever used them in your classroom, such an easy, fun, engaging way for children to manipulate shapes. So there is the butterfly, the bee, the caterpillar, the dragonfly. So there are four of them in there for you to use. Print those out, use them wherever you'd like, but they are um, very well loved mats. Something they can do quietly during, maybe you need a quiet time for your nappers that aren't napping so well, things like that. I mean, they can just, they're endless uses. Another small group game that we love to play is the all gone game. And so this one is the bug jar game board. And so you have to play with two players and two players sit across from each other. So one has the purple jar, one has the red jars. And before you start playing, you're going to need to gather 20 things. They could be beans. Beans work really good. Um, they could be little tiny bug erasers. I, I found some pretty small ones that we like to use. And uh, they could be bug, like plastic bugs. Anything you want. Anything that works. Put 10 on each jar so each player gets 10 to start with so this is an all gone game when all of them are out of the jar then that's the person who wins first and so you can roll a dot die you can do dot cards you can do it however you want roll um you could spin a numeral spinner however you want to use it but players take turns rolling or spinning however many they get they take off that many from their bug jar. So they're freeing the bugs. And if you want to add some fine motor, obviously grab some pinchers. Beans would work great with that. They're super small and have them work on pinching them out of the bug jar. Cause sometimes real bug jars or kid versions of real bug jars come with little tweezers to help guide those little bugs in or out of the jar. So that is a super fun one. It is so quick. It is so easy, but they're practicing and they're going to want to play it again. So you might want to print more than one of these so that you can have more than one set of students playing at a time. Because I found that once a set of students start, you start getting like swarm around the table. They all want to play. So it's always a great idea to just go ahead and have those available for them. And that's why things like beans make it super easy because you don't have to try to find a ton of bug manipulatives. And they, they really don't, they really don't mind. They love playing with little bugs. And I usually put those in the sensory center, but when playing a game, they really don't mind. We love to encourage their, their um, imagination of what, how to use things as other things. I apologize, having some camera difficulty there. The last activity I wanna share with you is, a sort that we like to do in whole group. It is a wings versus no wings sort. And so I like to gather the kids around and have this in the middle. And a lot of times I will give them the cards. And so this is an example of one of the cards. They have real pictures on them. And so we can look at them, name them and sort them. So does this dragonfly have wings or no wings? It has wings. This is from the two, three year old bugs lesson plan. Grasshopper, does he have wings? Does the bee have wings? How do we know, right? Does a caterpillar have wings? Not yet, he will, right? And we've got a butterfly in here. And so they can go through and sort all of those insects, all those bugs into whether they have wings or no wings. So I hope you can use these activities for just elaborating and trying new activities for your insect theme. And if you want to go ahead and grab them, there is a link up above for you. They are free. All you got to do is enter your email address. It'll come right to your email and you can grab those and drop me a comment down below if you plan on using them, if they found, if you found them helpful, if this is something you'd like me to do with some other thematic units as well. So let me know, drop it in the comments. I will see y'all soon. Bye.